It's uh, I'm pumped. Is is fighting in Perth maybe even easier than fighting, you know, back home in Sydney? Because I remember they had like the welcome to the country ceremony, and they spoke about you specifically, and it felt like you were maybe had to do a lot more media when fighting in Sydney as opposed to Perth. Uh, no, nah, it's all the same. I still feel like I'm doing a bit of media, but uh, it's uh, it's home, so I suppose it goes with it. You got matched up with Jairzinho, and, you know, he said, he wouldn't use the term happy, but, you know, he said it was nice having to prepare for an opponent that he didn't think was going to be shooting on his legs or grappling or anything. So when they matched you up with Jairzinho, uh, were you looking forward to, you know, just getting in there, getting in a fist fight? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I suppose it's a good fight for both of us. Um, I've been watching him for a while now, so it's, uh, they're, they're usually the fights I like to take and challenge myself, so I'm looking forward to it. I saw on your, your social media, you used the phrase, like, my head ain't been too good the last couple of years. I guess as much as you can talk about it, like, what was actually going on in your life that, you know, maybe you oh, cleared up? We're normal people, you know. we got shit goes on and, you know, we deal with it certain ways. I feel like uh, my head's been other places other than fighting. So, and it's been showing in my, in my performances. So. But that's how life goes and, and we, we roll on and we roll through. So I feel like... Uh, I've gotten over that and, and ready to roll. We saw a video of you sparring with Alex Pereira, and um, even Jair Zinho said, like, you know, you can learn something from anyone, especially Alex. So what was it like sparring in there with him? Yeah, it was kind of my first training session back, and I got the shit punched out of me. So I think I left a few days after that to Dubai, and I was like, yeah, fuck, I better go train. We've, we've spoken to a few guys that have sparred with him, and, you know, when you use big gloves, it's one thing, but they say, like, well, if we had MMA gloves, this would feel a lot different getting punched by him. So what was it like, like, feeling him touch you? Oh, uh, I don't... His power was, you know, he's a, I'm fighting heavyweight, so it's, we can uh, we can take a punch or two, but it was more I was... Uh, I hadn't been training. I went in, and I was fucking running out of breath and yeah. getting the shit punched out of me, so... But uh, th this is that's the sport we do, and it was all fun and games. You also saw you're going to do the amazing race. Uh, how did that come about? Yeah, <laughs> the amazing race. Uh, that, I, they just kind of popped up, and um, I thought uh, it's a bit out of my uh, thing, you know. But it was a great experience I, that I get to do with my brother, and um, people from where I'm from usually wouldn't get to experience things like that. So it was a great opportunity, and. Um, we took it and ran with it. Just two quick ones for me, unrelated to your fight. I don't know if you saw, but November, they're going to implement some of the rule changes that will allow 12 to 6 elbows, and it's re redefined the grounded opponent rule. You can no longer play the game with just a hand on the ground. So I'm curious, did you hear about these rules, and do you think it's been a long time coming? I don't even think I know the actual rules. So what's uh, can you can kick them in the face? So you can't soccer kick them, but you need, you know, some fighters will put their hands on the ground to avoid getting elbowed or kneed or anything, and now they need another part. You can't just prop your hand up and be considered grounded. If my hand's on the ground, I'm probably tapping out, so probably not for me. Sure. And uh, I think I know your answer, but uh, how do you th see the main event playing out between Israel and Drikas? I think it's going to be a great fight, but I uh, have to back my boy Izzy. I've got a bet with uh, Drikas on... Uh, on the rugby union, so hopefully he'll win that too. <laughs> he, he's getting a couple rugby, uh, s some of the Springboks guys walking him out to his fight. Not if they get smashed on Saturday. <laughs> Tyre, back here. Uh, the last time uh, you were in Australia, as mentioned, you were fighting uh, in Sydney. I asked you about that, and, and I wasn't sure if you were still living out there, and you said everyone knows where I live. Uh, since then, you have moved to Dubai. You're a man who reps Western Sydney through and through. Uh, why make that decision, and how difficult was it? I, I, I didn't move there. I lived I lived in Dubai for three years when I was on uh, my little winning streak. And uh, <laughs> Dubai is just a real good place for me. I, I just go there. I, I just tune in, and I've got one thing to think about, and that's fighting. Uh, when I'm home, I've I got friends, family. I've got a few businesses that I have to, you know, and my, when my head's all around it's I'm not thinking about fighting so and I'm a normal bloke you know there's parties there's there's birthdays fuck I'm usually the first one there so to be away and and, and to sacrifice those things it's it's kind of better for me and just keeps my head on the fight what is the style of training you get out there just focused 
I suppose. Yeah, uh, fighting is a lot of a mental game, you know. Uh, I'm not going to come out and be a, a fucking wrestler or anything like that, but when I'm there, I just eat, sleep and train, you know what I mean? So it's more just a mental thing for me. Uh, you mentioned uh, those other businesses that you have, uh, Drink West as well as Bam Bam Buds. Uh, are those things that you had dreamed up of doing and then you approach someone about it? Does someone come to you to set that up? How did th that come to be? No, they're just things that I love, drinking piss and smoking weed. So <laughs> it's, uh, it kind of goes with, and I suppose that's what I, I love to fight. So I love to, that's how I make my money. And I believe that in life you should do things that you love. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you. Ty, <coughs> down here to your left. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the little winning streak that you're on, obviously a five-fight KO streak, and, you know, haven't been able to recapture that in the past few fights. Um, but you have been here before, and that five-fight winning streak came on the heels of that. So does that give you confidence to know that you've been in this exact situation before and you were able to turn it around in a big way? Oh, definitely there's some pressure, but um, I, I've been here before. Uh, I'm from Western Sydney. We're, we're on the losing end of the spectrum. But um, we overcome, and that's what adversity is about. And we, we, we come out winners. So, uh, yeah, just I'm ready to come back now. Fucking losing shit. <laughs> so, I, again, it was uh, 2018, UFC two, uh, 221, I believe it was, that uh, you had a good win o over here. You were probably uh, robbed of a performance of the night bonus that night. Are you keen to get that back on uh, this Sunday? Oh, extra money I'll never say no to, so I'm, I'm keen for a, a... Actually, at the moment, you know, I think that's one thing we've been working on is just uh, staying, you know, focused and, and winning, not having to go out there and trying to take someone's head off. But I kind of get in the, to the mix a bit. <laughs> And last year you were a guest fighter here for UFC 284. You did the did the shoey in front of the crowd. The crowd loved you. Obviously, you must be you must be keen to uh, to get in there, get the job done, and then get that shoey going after winning another fight. Definitely, it's been uh, it's been a while since drinks, so I'm uh, I'm keen to uh, get a good win and get on it. We caught up uh, at Welcome to Country uh, this week. It, it was again, it was a fantastic ceremony. Uh, you also caught up with uh, an, another talent in the in the boxing world who's been described as a generational talent in Alex Winwood. Uh, he's got a world title fight uh, coming up on September 7. Uh, if he wins that fight, he will uh, break the Australian record and get to a world title fight two fights faster than Jeff Fennick did. So you've obviously had a quick chat to him, but what, what advice would you give uh, someone like that who's heading into his world first world title fight? No, Alex is a great fighter, and he and put them together really good, and I think he's on, on the right way. So, shout out to my boy, Alex. All the best for the weekend, Ty. Cheers, bro. Ty. Um, I know you and uh, yourself and Tyson Pedro mentioned last time in Sydney that you don't really like being called role models for people in Western Sydney. But do you kind of acknowledge that these are people, uh, you know, younger generations look up to you and that there's been a massive surge in the popularity of MMA in general in Western Sydney since you have uh, emerged? Oh, well, I think the the highest number of UFC fighters have come out of Western Sydney. So, in Australia anyway, I think. James Tahuna, me, Tyson. We'll make up some more. <laughs> Whitaker lives in Western Sydney. If that's yeah, yeah. Whitaker, he's from Seatown. Mark, we'll claim more. <laughs> but yeah, um, Look, I, I get it like a role model, but I'm I'm a normal person. I like to do normal things, and that all it is is chase what you love and do what you love, and that that'll you can do whatever you want. Every time you fight, there's a video that surfaces on social media, and it's an Instagram live of you. And uh, I think you know where I'm going with this. That uh, it comes up on your Instagram live, and you're just pissing yourself laughing. I just want to know. Have I you still ever talked to him? Yeah, I was gonna say, have you ever reached out to him? Do you have a relationship? No, no, with him? I, I talk with him. I, he sends me his raps. So I got. <laughs> so I talk to I talk to a lot of my fans. Like, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm just a normal bloke. I'm not too good for no one, you know. Unless you're a dickhead, I don't care. You know, we're all normal people. We get along with everyone. But yeah, I still talk to old mate. He uh, he picks fruit in Adelaide. It's one of the best videos ever, honestly. It comes up every time and it's always hilarious. Um, 
on the, you know, going to Dubai, I think it was something that Tyson Pedro said before his last UFC fight is that he liked getting away from the family because it was almost light at the end of the tunnel and a bit of motivation that once he gets through his fight, he's got his family there. Is that something that you've used as well? Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, uh, I like being out of my comfort zone because when I'm too comfortable, I can go off track. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, I sacrificed seeing my son for, for nine, ten weeks. And obviously it's a bit hard, but we've got to work hard now and then we can enjoy the fruits later. Speaking of your son, um, when the WWE was here in Perth, you came out here and he seemed to love it. Is there a future for you in the WWE? I'd love to give it a crack. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been a fan of the WWF back in them days and, and uh, I've been a big fan and obviously, there's a big Samoan community in, in the wrestling in, in the wrestling crowd, so I'm definitely keen. I don't know about my acting skills, but we'll have a crack. You can join the bloodline. I'll be the leader of the bloodline. <laughs> and just finally, uh, Panthers, they're going to do the four peak. Definitely, it's four Mad Mondays. Thank you. Ty, just down here, um, that gentleman who sends you his rap songs, are they any good? I don't want to put him on blast right now, <laughs> but my man's good. He's good. I'll, we'll just say he's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.